feels like a lifetime ago that Polar Lights released their uh, first in their large scale Enterprise uh, Starship series, the NX-01. I believe that was in 2003 or 2004. And um, that was a great kit for its era. Pretty simple. Um, built into a nice replica of the ship. Well, this detail was a little soft, but uh, it built into a nice ship. And it was pretty well designed for lighting. Clear windows, uh, clear grills on the sides of the warp nacelles and the bassard collectors. And uh, nicely blue, or nice back, clear piece for backlighting the deflector dish. It was a nice model. A couple of years later, uh, they released what many considered was their magnum opus. It was the uh, movie era Enterprise. An even nicer kit. Uh, an even nicer kit of an even nicer subject. Uh, I still have mine. It still works. Very proud of that fact. I thought it was broken. Um, the saucer detached uh, a couple of years ago when I was moving um, out of my condo. I had to move all my stuff to my parents' house when I moved to Alberta. Uh, so I was worried that the lighting inside uh, was damaged, but I did it. I found a, a power adapter that worked, and I did a quick test, and hot damn, that sucker still works. So excited. Um... So yeah, that was considered to be probably the best large-scale Star Trek kit for a very, very long time. Until 2013, uh, when Polar Lights Round 2 released the original series Enterprise in the same scale. Not only did they make the kit, but they released photo etch sets, uh, backdate kits to do it as the one of the two different pilot versions, or as the Mirror Universe ep uh, edition, in addition, they also released their own lighting kit. I have not seen one of these in almost three years. I didn't expect I was going to see one with my own eyes ever again. Um, hot damn. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in the hobby shop uh, yesterday. I was actually in there looking for glue. I was going to buy some glue and some paint. And uh, I was looking in, they have this little display case, and I'm like, wait a minute, that can't be. Is that? What? Wait, what? It is. Oh my god. So I call over the clerk behind the counter, and I'm like, can I take a look at something in there? And he pulls it out, and he's like, yeah, we just got those in. Um, they're pretty expensive. And I look at it, figuring it's going to be like $160, $180. bucks. 100 bucks. What the hell? I've been seeing these on Amazon or on eBay for four or five hundred US. This was a hundred dollars Canadian. It was the only one they had. Um, so yeah, I bought that thing. I bought that thing immediately, no hesitation. You better believe I was not gonna leave that thing behind. Um, they additionally had a couple of uh, decal sets. Um, I believe the. Uh, a saucer weathering, the rust ring as it's often referred to, uh, as well as alternate marking um, and uh, details for if you wanted to do other ships. But um, I'm not, I wasn't too into those because I'm doing mine when I get around to doing it. I've had the thing for three years now, but when I get around to building it, um, I'm going to do it as the series version with... Uh, I'm so excited! Um... Because I was genuinely was not sure I was ever going to find uh, the the lighting kit for anything less than the cost of an arm and a leg. Um, so when I found this instantly, yeah, I did not hesitate. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I really wish that I had the means to actually build this thing right now. Because um, it's going to look amazing when it's finished. Uh, I've, I have taken a look through the box, uh, kind of gotten a, a, a glimpse at what's going on inside, and I have studied the instructions very carefully, and it looks impeccably well designed. Um, like, this kit was designed for... They were designed concurrently. Like, the, the, the model was designed explicitly to be lit with this set. So they fit together, like, perfectly. Like, a, a hand in glove. So... I'm really excited to build this thing and see just how well it works and what it looks like. Um, but uh, in the meantime, 
uh, I'm just going to have to kind of dream about it and continue watching old episodes of TOS for uh, inspiration. Uh, and But in the meantime, yeah, we can, uh, we can crack it open and we can take a look at what comes inside. It's a standard box, but uh, you've got uh, quite a lot of details about uh, what you got. Uh, 95 LEDs, pair of engine motors, no solder required. You got some colored clear parts. Uh, big photo of the completed model. Uh, no wiring, all everything is pretty much included. Um, all you really need to supply are just your tools and your time. And uh, got a nice view of the shuttle bay. The instructions uh, start off with a big disclaimer. Uh, first off, read all instructions before beginning installation, the list of recommended tools. Uh, gives some explanation about how all the different components work. Uh, diagram of the uh, circuit boards and what each uh, ind individual, kind of a legend of symbols. Um, as well as some, there's some additional information about how, how to work with a lit kit. Uh, assembly starts with the uh, warp nacelles, uh, then the shuttle bay, so uh, connecting dorsal, uh, saucer top, saucer bottom, and secondary hull, um, and then final assembly. Looks like everything is nicely tucked in together. It looks like, I mean, the kit was designed to accommodate this, like they were designed concurrently with each other, so it's going to be a pretty uh, exciting uh, thing to to, 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 to build so uh, we got our power supply um, with the uh, uh, so, uh, male and female ends of the power socket uh, we got our two circuit boards um, I believe this would be for the secondary hull this would be for the saucer and then these would be the strips of white LEDs for all the uh, panel illumination. You got your twin motors and a single screw. These motors would be for the uh, Bassard collectors, the grills that spin inside of the Bassard collectors. Um, and apparently they're designed to spin at the correct rate and in the correct direction if you install them properly. Um, I believe they're marked which one is right and which one is left. Christmas lights. Uh, the original kit comes with, I believe, one of these, maybe two of these runners, but molded in clear. Uh, and these ones are intended to supplement those, or rather to replace those uh, when you install the lighting. They're supposed to kind of reflect the light and refract the light in such ways that um, uh, they kind of make the, the Bassard collectors look kind of well, to make them look like they do in the show, or at least as closely as possible. Looks like there's a few extra pieces that probably aren't for the Bussard collectors. Like, I think maybe there's a couple of uh, uh, marker lights here and there. Um, so, yeah, probably the port and starboard marker lights are on, this, on these runners as well. That's an awful lot of wiring. Um, so they've each got uh, one of these sockets on the end that uh, plug into the uh, circuit card, but in addition, these connectors are designed to fit into the, uh, the lighting strips. Uh, so the lighting strips are self-adhesive, they attach to the ship on their own, and then you just attach these connectors to them, and that supplies power to them. And then there's a few that have uh, LEDs already connected, so those would be for, you know, the Areas where strips aren't really necessary, like the lower sensor dome and the shuttle bay, a few other places here and there. Um, these would be the Bassard collector lights. I'm not sure if the LEDs are white or if they're multicolored or what, but uh, I'm eager, actually. I'm really eager to try these out, uh, but it's going to be a while. Um, but uh, yeah, they. Uh, look like they fit directly in. They've each got two sockets, so it looks like one uh, takes power from the board and one feeds power to the motor uh, for each nacelle. So. 
And uh, last up, we've got some additional clear parts um, for the shuttle bay. These would be the uh, uh, this would be the shuttle bay aft or forward bulkhead, I guess. Uh, the side bulkheads and the ceiling. Uh, you've got a clear part for the bridge. Should you choose to display the uh, the bridge with the, the the dome translucent, you can light it from below and have kind of illuminated uh, control panels and uh, backlit. Um, instruments and whatnot here and there. Um, and I'm thinking these are for the uh, warp nacelle uh, in the inside, the inboard grills. This one I'm not sure. I think... Oh, I'd have to guess this would be the uh, running lights, the aft running lights for the uh, landing bay. Um, so. Whew. 95 LEDs. 95. Most of them seem to come on those uh, adhesive-backed strips uh, in uh, groups of three. But then there's the Bassard collectors, which appear to have eight or nine LEDs on each one. And then there's about a dozen, it appears, um, individual LEDs. But the whole thing is pre-wired. So very little modification of the kit should be necessary um, I think there's I think the instruction said that there was like one place at the aft of the ship near the shuttle bay um, where you have to trim a little bit to fit an LED and um, maybe a couple other spots here and there that need a little bit of work but yeah this does not look like it's gonna take a lot of effort uh, to install especially when compared to my refit enterprise um, which took me three months just to design and install the, the lighting um, three months out of a five-month project just to design and install a custom lighting system um, in a ship that was not really that, uh, it was but it wasn't well designed to accommodate lighting um, it took it, it, it did all right it could have been better, um, and I think I did about as good as a good, as good a job as uh, anyone with what little experience I had at the time could with that ship. And I still think it looks fantastic. But this one, yeah, this is just going to be plug and play. Just drop it in, assemble it, done. Um, and I can't wait. I just can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, this looks. The kit itself looks great, and um, and I only just found out the other day that uh, the ship is getting a reissue uh, this year. I don't know if they're going to reissue the lighting kit, but the model itself is getting a reissue uh, toward the end of this year uh, for the 50th anniversary of Trek. And they're going to be rectifying my only complaint about the ship. If you watch my review back when I uh, originally bought that thing back in 2014, um, when I opened that thing up, I was really upset that the saucer section had uh, engraved grid lines for the deflector shield grid. Yeah, the shooting prop did not have uh, an engraved grid for the deflector shield. Um, no, what I've actually known for quite a long time uh, is that uh, the grid lines were drawn on in pencil uh, with, I believe, a number two pencil um, on the surface. And um, it's become a lot more, that knowledge has become a lot more common in the last several months since uh, the Smithsonian has been doing their renovation on, or their restoration, I should say, on the shooting prop. Um, so now that that knowledge is, uh, is a lot more public, uh, round two decided they were going to reissue the kit with the proper saucer without the grid lines. But they're not going to make you buy the entire kit again if you're like me and you were an early adopter and you got suckered in with uh, the incorrect model. They're going to reissue the saucer alone as well. Uh, you'll be able to buy the corrected saucer on its own. I'm not sure where or how. I'm sure it'll be on Amazon. I'm sure Round 2 will have it on their own web store. Whether or not it's going to be available at hobby shops, I have no idea. 
If it is, I'm probably going to snap one up there. If not, I'll, I'll resort to Amazon. But I will have that corrected saucer. And uh, when I do get it, I will do a, uh, a, a quick look at it uh, in comparison to the original edition saucer. So, yeah. Damn it, I wish I had a working... Uh, I wish my studio was up and running so badly I wish I was able to get out there and get working on this thing but yeah it's gonna have to wait until next year and God only knows if I'm gonna have the time or the energy I don't know what I'm gonna be doing for work next spring but we'll see um, that pretty much wraps up our uh, look at round two's kits uh, over that we've how many days is this? Nine days, I think. Nine straight days of model kit reviews. Um, yeah, uh, this was uh, this was a big project. Uh, I didn't expect this was going to be quite uh, this was going to be quite this intensive, but um, I don't have any plans for uh, future video series. I've got a couple of Macross kits and uh, other. Uh, other stuff that will be coming in the mail in probably the next month or so. So I'll do unboxing reviews of those. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know when they're going to be coming. Um, but keep an eye on my Twitter. Um, I always like to uh, keep people updated on what's going on. Um, so yeah, uh, not much else to say other than that. So thank you everyone out there for watching and uh, happy modeling.